Hi everybody, welcome to Old Guy's Garage. All right, so here's some of the tools we used. Um, got an extension, uh, eight, ex eight inch extension, six inch extension. We have a three quarter, five eighths, half inch socket. It's good old socket wrenches down here. Quarter inch, half inch, screwdriver, pliers. These vice grips game came in great for taking the springs off the brakes. This came in great for breaking the uh, the front suspension loose, steering suspension. These work great behind back here to get into hard to reach spaces. And again, most of these are the same old 3 quarter, 5 eighths, 9 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths, half inch sizes. And a good old breaker bar. Um, we are going to start disassembling the front end here of the 72. Put a whole new front end suspension and do a disc brake conversion. So you can kind of see where we're at now. Can't wait to see what this is all going to look like when, when it's done. It is going to look fantastic and drive fantastic. It's just going to hug to the road. Let's go to the other side. Got to love the, the black trim on these grills, man. Everything just pops. And here is the passenger side. Yeah. Got some work to do. It's going to be fun. But man, when this thing is done, you won't have to do it again. And there's a look from underneath. So stay tuned, I'm going to be dis disassembling this shortly. All right, you're going to, we're going to be taking apart a lot of parts. Um, this, these are some parts further along in the process after the front end disassembly um, that I've been painting and prepping like these brake brackets here, brake line brackets. These are bolts that tie in the lower end of the shocks. And then these are some washers that go up on the upper A arms. So, and we got some fender bolts there, but you can see all these Ziploc bags here that I've been using to keep track of all the parts idler arm bolts. Um, here's the memory tapes for the shims. Um, fender fasteners, those are over here. Yeah, what we got here? Um, cleaned up. Brackets for the brake line and the cross member spindle bolts. I'm keeping these. I think the brake disc conversion has half inch bolts where these are 7 sixteenths. I'm keeping them just in case. Um, some more brake line brackets. Um, an empty bag here. So you can kind of just see here keeping everything organized. They've even got some bumpers that go on the lower A arms here, cleaned up, ready to go. So it definitely makes a difference keeping all of this stuff organized. Alrighty, here we go. We're going to try to get this guy disassembled. Okay, here we go. We'll be working on him.
there we go. There's the old bearing. We got a new one of those to put on. Oh, wow, look at that. I was not expecting that. Definitely different than from the rear. All right. Communicating with Pops here. <laughs> okay, now we're, I'm going to go ahead and just disassemble this, guys, because I'm going to save it, but I'm going to disassemble it. I'm a hold of my glove. Let me finish disassembling this side here first. Oh, I hate it when vice grips do that. I think we all can agree. Hold back here. You can, boy. Once steering spindle's pretty close to that. Okay, there we go. All right, making headway. Gonna do the other side. All right, driver's side now. We're gonna do the same thing. Uh, three quarter here with the breaker bar. We're gonna loosen these bad boys up. Here we go. Just gonna loosen them and then the wrench on the back. I'm just going to try to get these bad boys to turn. There we go. <clears throat> yep, really don't like this one. <clears throat> get, get close to the camera here. And when you are torquing these guys, putting a lot of force behind them, just make sure you know where your hands are at and where they may go if something slips. I don't like that. Talk about torque. <sighs> okay. Let's try this one. Got a little looser there. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to switch. <clears throat> Man, this is almost like a half inch socket job.
Alrighty, that's a good sign. Let me go grab that bolt. loosen this side here this one with this guy love these long wrenches I'm sure there's applications we're going to run into where the short ones would be really handy okay there we go Now it's really easy. Well, oh, here we go. Okay, there's a bolt. Let me come back out. I'm back behind here. Boom, shakalaka. We we'll just take this out. Look at that. Now we can turn this around and get these uh, get these brake lines loose if we want when we want. And we can get this guy off as well. That is also three quarter. Let's see how he goes here. with the breaker bar. There we go. Three quarter breaker bar. Make sure that guy's on all the way. Oh yeah. Been on there for over 50 years. And you get them loose. And man, look at that. Come right out for us. Good deal. That's fairly loose. And We'll go ahead and disconnect this brake line. 7 sixteenths. Come on, baby. All right, that's an interesting bracket. I say we keep that. Like I said, I'm keeping everything until we are done here with the, with the disc conversion and cleaning up this front end. Well, that brake line wasn't too tight. I think this is one I may have cut too. Keep all your brake lines. Compare them to the new ones or bend new. Just take this bracket off here. This is half inch. Might be able to get this hose off. I'm going to reinstall this bracket though so it doesn't go anywhere. There we go. And there's the rusted on clip. I'm going to grab a hammer, see if I can't break that off. At least get it loose.
I really got to give my dad shit about all this stuff, but he said he's big on lubrication. Man, oh man. Look at all this shit. Alright, here we go. Nine sixteenths. Nine sixteenths for these bolts. For the anti sway bar. Alrighty, here we go. Man, I should get my sock, my wrenches out here that have the ratchets built in. Here we go. Oh yeah, that is a lot easier. I'm just going to thread all this on here. Um, I'll try to. Okay, I think this is as far as I'm going to take this side, at least for now. Oh, forgot a bush. Whoops. All right. We're going to hop on to the driver's side of the car. Continue on. All right, look at that. Well, let's go ahead and get this this guy taken care of. Nine sixteenths. It must have been different. This is half inch. Must have been different from the other side. Hold on, I got seven sixteenths here. No. Okay, these bolts are different, so that was, those are half inch. All right, and we're back. Yep, half inch it is. It's a little bit different from the other side. These are, looks like they are newer. Yep. Well, yep, nine sixteenths on the bottom, half inch on the top. A little weird, but hey. Get on that guy really good. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna unwind this guy from down here. Oh, I just got a little weather out here today. It is just gorgeous. Upper 60s, sunshine. What a great day to have the garage door open. Working on your favorite project. All righty, here we go. Okay. Put all this stuff back together. I'm gonna make sure what I bought is the same length as this. So these look like they're a little bit longer here. We shall see. Yeah. I'm going to finish getting this sway bar off here, guys. I'm going to grab the tools and pop this guy off. All right, guys, I'm taking this sway bar off. 9 sixteenths. I'm going to have that one almost done and go to the other one over here. Keeping these bolts for sure because um, the new brackets I have did not come with bolts, I don't believe. So, all right. 
Oh good, he's not as heavy as my other one. Almost there. I see the end. Okay, sway bar. Sway bar bolts go in a special place. Snap some more reference pictures here. Okay, cool beans. I'm gonna continue disassembling the steering linkage, guys. Okay, guys, what I did, I just re-threaded these bolts that I took out that went through the dust plate on the brake drum. So just to keep them in there, just in case. I know I gotta reuse these spindles um, with the new disc brake conversion. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to reuse these bolts. That's why I'm putting them right through there so I know where they go. All right, and we're back. Nine sixteenths. the whole body into it, yeah. Oh, looks like we have to go through the frame here. So I'm like, these are not loosening. So anyhow, gonna grab that extension, six inch extension. Come on now. Well, hopefully the holes through the frame are big enough. I'm sure the factory guys thought about that right. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Perfect. We're ready to rock and roll here. I might be able to get away with a 4-inch extension here. Wow, would you look at that? There's the bolt. Definitely saving this one too. Let's hope I have that much luck getting the next bolt out. Man, that'd be great. Oh, baby. We're gonna put these, I'm actually gonna put these bolts right back on this guy here. There we go. I right, just moved the camera. Just realized I had the camera arm here in the way. Probably ruined some of my video, but I'm gonna break the center link here free. Try to get that copper pin out, take that guy out. Let's see if we can't tap them through. There we go. Okay, that looks like I can pull that out. All right, there we go. All right, I'm gonna save this castle nut here too, guys. Five eighths. We need um, eleven sixteenths. Well, we needed 11 sixteenths. Three quarters seemed like it was. There we go. Oh, 
come on now. There we go. Whoa. Wasn't on there super tight. So after this drops, I'm going to put this back, this bolt, this castle nut back on. All right, we are making some progress here. Got another tool here from Harbor Freight. This is gonna help us separate the, the parts here. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave this guy here, the pitman arm, into the power steering here. Um, I don't think we, I don't wanna take that out right now um, there's gears and all kinds of stuff up in there um, so we're just gonna leave this leave that part in there but we are gonna break this guy down and come finish removing all this fun stuff so here we go going to be busting this guy apart we're going to need this piece here from both sides um, for our disc brake conversion so these we're going to save so we can put the new parts together just like the old ones here um, before we get the alignment done It's a doozy. There we go. Him. Put this nut back on. Okay. Let's do the other side. I lose here. Almost had to drill this one out. The powder pin was so far wedged in there I could barely hook it. There we go. All right. Save these guys for the disc brake conversion. As far as part storage goes, I've been using my old truck toolbox here to store the, the linkage in and everything. That way when we put it back together, we could just compare and put it, put the new parts back together as close to the old ones as possible. Even old brake lines, got the old brake lines here still. There's the, the cross member brake line. Um, we're going to be putting that the new one in shortly. But kept the old one, I want to make sure the bends and everything are the same. It'll save you some time and headache when you apply the new brakes, brake lines. All right, we're going to, we're inside the engine bay here. We're going to loosen up the shock absorber. And go ahead and take that out. All right, we got the top. We're going to go to the bottom. Here we're going to use a half inch socket. Up top it was 9 16 and we're going to go ahead and finish dropping the shock here. 
And this one was a little tricky. Let's see if I can get a good camera angle there. There we go. I'll put some vice grips on the top, and then I'm going to come down here with my wrench. And oh, can't quite get the video of it, but uh, whoop, there we go. And then turn it there and get it loosened up. And here are the shocks. And what I did, I put the lower bolts back in the lower A arm. And I put everything on top back up here. So just in case we need it again, we put the new shocks in when we rebuild. Like I said, I'm keeping everything till the end. We're getting ready here to drop the springs out of the front end here. Took out the brakes. So we're going to be rebuilding everything under here. I'm getting it all refinished refinished and we're gonna go from there so um, so stay tuned all right I'm getting ready here to um, break free the bolts on the a arms um, before we drop the spring so I'm spraying getting the bolts prepped I'm gonna let these set up before we go any further and this is what I'm using. Yeah, not going crazy with this stuff. Just putting enough on there. I don't want to spray it too hard. I'm just kind of letting it sit. Come on, focus. Just letting it sit on there. Sit on the bolts. Sit on the threads. All right, guys, what we're doing here, I have sprayed um, the upper and lower control arm bolts. And we're going to go on in and just loosen these up. It makes it let the control arm fall easier as when we take the spring out. So this one here is looking good. Three quarter inch wrench socket. We're just going to go around and do this to all of them particularly on the lower control arm. The upper control arm, I don't think I'm going to mess with at this point. I'm All right, we got the bolts loose on the A arms. Now I'm going to clean all this crud off these castle nuts so we can see what we're doing. It's somewhere under there. Man, oh man, look at this top one. Lots of gum. Hopefully get most of it in this box. Make clean up a little easier. Get the other side here. Oh, there's a castle nut under there somewhere. I like to be able to see what I'm doing. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. And we're going to again keep all our parts. Alright, I'm going to go over to the other side and do the same thing. I'm going to just work on that a little bit, just using a screwdriver, just scraping what I can. Maybe I'll find some treasure, you never know. There we go. So, oh boy, look at all that. Oh man. All right. 
right, next what we're going to do is remove these cotter pins and just loosen the castle nuts. And we're going to do this to both sides. Let's see what size. That, my guess is 7 eighths. Top one. Like three quarters. <clears throat> Let's see here. We'll flush that out. All righty. Alright, so we have the uh, part of the spring chained up around the A-arm. We've loosened the castle nuts. And now I'm going to bust, or I'm going to break free the, uh, the upper and lower ball joint with the castle nuts still on. Hey, whenever you're done? Yeah, really. Okay, here we go. We're going to do the other side again. I'm going to run this chain through a few hoops on this spring here. through this hoop here in the frame, pull some slack through. There we go, we'll do a little bit more. Now I'm going to pull this guy out right through here. Come on, don't fight me. Well, I have to do it the hard way. Yep. I'm just going to feed this end up. There we go. slack in it. The key out. All right, put the gloves back on and now we're gonna... Oh, what's this guy? All right. I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy. this time. There we go. 
using a big old sledge. Okay. Under my space. Seven eighths, three quarters. I'm going to get to position the jack under here shortly. I'm just going to undo this guy here. Okay, he's loose. Make sure my jack is as tight as possible. Okay. Alrighty. so slowly lowering the sky. Okay, it's moving a little too quick for me. Ease up a little more. You can hear it going. Still going down. Nice and easy. Oh, it's a little too quick. I'm going to tighten it up. Okay. Looks like the spring is free. Let the A arm drop. Remember, we loosened those bolts up earlier. Here we go. Woo. Okay, so now, yeah, we're back hitting the header again, so we're going to need to pry that guy out. Got him. I'll grab the key here. Okay. Now this is a big deal for me. There you have it. Good old three quarter. Whoops. I'll do it this way. There we go. This other guy out. Uh, 
Oh, I've got to love these wrenches. Got to love them. All right, that came right off that time. Okay, we're going to finish getting our bolts loose over here. It's three quarter. Castle nuts. Get your good forearm workout here. Get those forearms up. All right, this is looking good. This is looking good. Well, that came right out. All right, I'm gonna keep these bolts. Let's get this guy here. Oh yeah, he's a lot easier to get to when you drop them. I was worried about this header here being in the way. Okay, here we go. You know what, I'm not even gonna use my socket. Let's just use this awesome little guy here. Glad we put that lube on this earlier. Made that really easy to get off. I'm gonna go grab the hammer real quick. Support this a little bit. Shit. And I'm hitting the header. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work my way past this header one way or the other. Um, uh, well, yep, we got a header problem here. This bolt is hitting this hooker header. I am not quite sure what to do. I'm going to put a little pressure on it to bend it out of the way and maybe I can get the head. <sighs> Wish they would have bent those headers just a little bit more. Well, we have to pause for a commercial break till I get this figured out. <laughs> So I did get the bolt through here past this header and what I ended up doing was actually using this getting it in between here and just forcing and just wedging it out so that luckily enough that worked just fine it was just small enough to help me get that bolt out so now we're gonna move forward sounds like a tuning fork doesn't it and move up here and we're gonna get these um, upper control arms out and we're going to save our shims. All right, guys, we're up here. Upper, upper control arms. Boy, those look like some big bolts, don't they? All right, here we go. I got some big boys here. One inch, 15 sixteenths, five eighths, and 11 sixteenths. Let's see what the, let's see what works. All right, that 11 16 fits on there. Let me see if the 5 8 will. Nope, okay, so 11 16 it is. Here we go. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice and easy. <clears throat> Little persuasion. I get these loose enough where I can get these shims out. We're gonna get these shims out so we can save them so when we reassemble, we know exactly where they go. I have seen 
guys with almost up to one inch thim thickness, th shim thickness. And what that's usually a symbol of is these bushings here wearing out and wearing through the metal. And guys compensate. Instead of replacing the bushings, they'll just continually stick more shims in, in place. And who, you know, until the buyer gets into it and just never knows. Okay, that's a little loose. I'm going to get the other one loose and we're going to record. We're going to save our shim shims for where they need to go when we get this thing back assembled. And if you want to, you can remove the spark plugs, spark plug wires to get out of your way. That make things a little bit easier. Totally your call. I'm going to just gently pry that guy. Let me see if I can grab these shims. Yes, I can grab those shims, so I'll be right back. All right, so I got my piece of tape here. Whoa. No, I don't. Be right back. All right, everybody. So um, I got my piece of tape here. Driver's side. Front shim, rear shim. And we're going to turn the tape over as we take the shims out. We're going to lay them on the retrospective sides here. All right. And... Oops, this one's slipping and a sliding a little bit. There we go. Got them all, yeah. So what I've done here, driver's side, the rear shims and the front shims. And I'm going to put these in a Ziploc bag. And we're going to continue to take this out shortly. All right, got one of these ratcheting wrenches. Should make quick work of this, I hope. Alright, so we unwound these nuts just far enough where they're flush with the bolts here and that will give us enough room here and protection for the threads when we hit these with a hammer to unseat the bolts. Well, how'd you do? Yep. And these are 15 sixteenths. There we go. I'm just going to loosen these up while they're in here. So what I ended up doing here, guys, was just taking a Sawzall with a Lennox blade and just cutting through the bolts. Um, just wasn't any way for me to get these loose. Kept on tapping, heating, everything else. Um, I've got some new bolts coming. Gonna save the uh, save the nuts though. There's the other A arm, and that's what I use right there. One blade per bolt. And here's some update video of the parts we removed. <clears throat> Went ahead and removed all the all the, the ball joints and the bushings from these guys. My wife went ahead and sandblasted them. And then I primed them and painted them. So <clears throat> getting ready to rebuild these. If you'd like to see how I disassembled these, remove the, uh, the ball joints and the bushings. Um, I do have a quick tip video on that. So um, look, for that up, look for that in my video feed. And here's an update on the front end here. Um, cleaned up the fender wells, removed all the undercoating from the fender wells. I have a video on that. 
quick tip um, and you can see I've pretty much cleaned up the whole frame here everything is looking nice and pretty and then as we go underneath everything here is ready for reassembly and it's looking really good look at that what a difference the frame all nice and painted up all right everybody that wraps it up for this video um, thanks for tuning in we're gonna have more videos coming out um, for this guy here particularly as we're rebuilding the suspension um, you have, may have already noticed at the end of this video the painted control arms and springs and everything so we're getting ready to drop those in install new brake lines all that fun stuff so underneath here it's really going to look great brand new compared to, to what it looked like so uh, thanks for tuning in please like comment share and subscribe um, that's really important um, if you have any comments on what we did here that would be great um, if you can leave them down below i'm sure other viewers would like like other tip, tips and tips and information on their process of redoing their suspension and improving um, their their muscle car so um, just remember guys, as we wrap this up, whether it's a muscle car, classic car, race car, your dream car, let's keep them running. We'll see you next time.